This is Bewilderbeasts, an infotainment show dedicated to inspiring curiosity for all ages by investigating the ways animals intersect at humanity. I am not a historian, an ethologist, a researcher, a scientist, a zoologist, a trained audio engineer, or an expert in, well, anything. Y'all, I'm lucky if I can remember to put my clean laundry in the dryer before it gets funky. And while I make every effort to present things as accurately as I can with a fun flair, I'm going to mess up. And that's okay. I hope I've given you a nice place to jump off from on your own adventures into curiosity. Or at the very least, I've given you the key to win your next round of trivia. This episode was recorded in December 2020, and a lot has happened since that recording and releasing it into your ear holes today. There is a lot of talk in this episode about when and if a vaccine for COVID becomes available, and you might have heard the great news. There is a vaccine available. Several, in fact. So when you listen to this episode, remember, thank the researchers who made this possible, the scientists who work nonstop to make this happen, and the doctors and nurses and hospital staff who are desperately trying to keep us safe. And horseshoe crabs. It'll make sense when you get there, I promise. And now, on with the episode. Welcome to Bewilder Beasts. I'm your host, Melissa McKee McGrath, still recording from the tiniest podcast studio closet outside of Boston, Massachusetts. Today on Bewilder Beasts, we are going to talk about how horseshoe crabs are the medical geniuses of medical science. Platypuses are way weirder than I think you even thought, and a nice dose of armadillo justice. Okay, let's go. know about you guys, but for me, there are just some animals out there that the more you learn about them, the more fascinating they become. And while I, for one, am terrified of spiders, as you have heard multiple times on this podcast, we're going to talk about a cousin of theirs, a cousin of theirs who have survived every mass extinction that we humans know about. They were around during the dinosaurs. And this is an arthropod called the horseshoe crab. Y'all, you couldn't have a flu shot. The COVID vaccine is dependent on horseshoe crabs. And any medical procedure you have ever had, including the drugs we consume to feel better after a headache or the sniffles, somehow tie back to horseshoe crabs. And I I just am blown completely away by this. The other thing we're going to talk about in a little bit more depth than I was intending to are platypuses. We know that they're super cool. They've got the duck bill and the beaver tail, and they just kind of look like they were put together with pieces of whatever was around. They are even weirder than I think you thought. (laughs) But first. So I don't think we've ever really talked about this or made it part of the creed of this show. But I will never share stories where animals get hurt or die due to violence from people. I will, however, share stories where people get hurt because of their own stupidity or karmic retribution for trying to hurt animals. And this is one of those stories. In 2017, an unidentified Texas man ended up going into the hospital for injuries from a bullet wound to the face. Now he's okay, And gun violence or violence towards people or animals just is not funny. But when Mr. Unidentified shot an armadillo and the bullet ricocheted off of his armored shell, the bullet came back and shot the guy in the jaw. The guy survived after being airlifted to a nearby hospital and had his jaw wired shut. Now, I'm not even sure if his jaw needed to be wired shut. I'm guessing his wife, maybe, who was also present, just didn't want to hear his excuses as to why he was shooting armadillos. But if this isn't a perfect story for gun safety awareness and don't be a jerk to animals, then I truly don't know what is. The armadillo was never found. 
I think if a reporter wanted to poke around until they found one insufferable grizzled armadillo who just won't shut up about that one time he took out a full-grown man with a thirty-eight caliber, man, he would have the scoop of the year. All right, so back to those horseshoe crabs. They are one of the few creatures on Earth who have survived multiple mass extinctions on Earth, including the dinosaurs. So when you see one of these horseshoe crabs, keep in mind that you are looking at an animal that has been around for at least 450 million years. How long is that? Well, they crab walked the earth with the dinosaurs, and there are indications that they were around before that. So this means when you are looking at a horseshoe crab, you are actually looking at a living fossil that has survived five mass extinctions on earth. How cool is that? Scientists have also discovered the secret to their ability of surviving these extinctions and 17 ice ages, while other creatures haven't been able to, might be in their blood. And it's a pretty obvious thing in their blood, something that you don't even really need to have a degree in science to notice it as right funky. It's the first thing you might notice about their blood. It's blue. What? Quick body chemistry sidebar. Have you ever thought about why your blood is red? Our blood is red because it carries oxygen and is rich in iron. But the horseshoe crab also carries oxygen through its blood, but it uses a different compound to do it. It uses copper. But their blood also contains a very special ingredient called LAL. LAL is a mighty defense that might be the key to the horseshoe crab's survival, and honestly, our own. Under a microscope, LAL will attack any bacteria that's present. So if a company is testing a new medicine or a new IV or a new needle or everything in medicine uses LAL from the horseshoe crab to make sure that we are not introducing dangerous bacteria into our body systems, which can kill us. So if you know someone who has a replacement knee or hip, I have screws in my right ankle. All of these things had to have been tested with LAL first. It's used in every injectable medication, a vaccine, and any equipment used in injections for humans in medical environments to ensure the equipment and medication is sterile. If you or a family member use contact lenses or have ingested any medication ever, all of these things are tested and considered safe to be put in our bodies, eyes, bones, kill headaches, prevent the flu, prevent polio, and someday, hopefully, COVID. Help with growing pains, run an IV for nearly every admittable procedure in a hospital, and they are all possible thanks in part to Horseshoe Crab's blue blood and their magic LAL. 500,000 horseshoe crabs are caught every year and essentially donate their blood to science. A third of the horseshoe crab's blood is collected, and then they are returned delicately and safely back to the ocean. But 15% of these crabs die from this process, and scientists are looking for new ways to create a synthetic version of LAL. And some companies have actually pulled this off. But there is a downside to using synthetics, and it's something that might not be an obvious thought. I mean, if we can make LAL without hurting horseshoe crabs, then they won't be stressed out from being removed from the ocean, brought by the thousands to a laboratory, and we wouldn't risk injury or death in the process just to help us. Right? So what's the downside? Well, if synthetics are used instead of the real deal, then they could very well lose their protected status. Fishermen could then use them for bait for better creatures, which is not ideal. So people who love the crabs and love birds are actually petitioning to make sure they remain protected so they can remain part of the ecosystem. Wait, bird people? How'd they get in here? Okay, so it turns out the horseshoe crab eggs are a valuable food source for migrating birds. So when crab numbers are down, birds suffer. So if medical science evolves to a point where we don't need these crabs anymore, we have to do our part to save them as they have saved us for the last half a century. We need to save their environment and make sure that they survive, as they have given us so much. It would be an absolute blemish on humankind if this creature, this amazing little arthropod, 
was able to survive five mass extinctions and 17 ice ages only to be wiped out by the very humans they saved in the name of medical science. Yes, arthropods. They are not crabs at all. They have 10 legs and are much more closely related to spiders and scorpions. And honestly, this question comes up every time I play pub trivia, so you're welcome. Their closest relatives are extinct, called (laughs) <laughs> I am not going to get this right. Europterids? Eur- Europterids. Or sea scorpions. Y'all, I tried. And this group includes some of the largest arthropods to have ever existed. I'm just still stuck on sea scorpions. But horseshoe crabs, they cannot hurt you. If you happen to find one upside down on a beach, you can grab it by the sides. Never on the tail because that can really hurt the animal. But if you grab it by the sides and tip him or her back on their feet, they can be safe. And if we do get a COVID vaccine or the next time you get a flu shot or pop some bubblegum flavored Tylenol for growing pains, a fever, a headache, thank a horseshoe crab, which has made your health very possible. And there are two episodes of other podcasts that you should listen to if you want a further blow your mind experience on these amazing creatures. Radio Lab did an episode called Baby Blue Blood Drive and Sawbones, a husband and wife family-friendly podcast about medical history. Their episode, How Horseshoe Crabs Probably Saved Your Life, is so good. Both of these podcasts are appropriate for all ages. So parents, if you're listening with your littles, these are some other options for you. They go deeper into these incredible ancient animals who have been here since the dinosaurs. And more importantly, they also talk about how we can help them because they help us so much. Before listening to Bewilderbeast, there was one animal that I think we could all agree was at least top three in weirdest animal category. If platypus is not in your top three, you need to submit those other funky animals to me, stat. Objectively, these animals are just heckin' weird. Platypus is? Platypi? Well, it turns out there's no universally agreed on plural form of platypus in the English language. Platypuses is widely accepted, but platypus will also work. Very much in the same way that genes and genes mean a single pair and more than one pairs of genes. Some people, well, this person, might use platypi for more than one platypus, although it's fake Latin and isn't used in, quote, respectable circles. But I hope you're not coming here for respectable circles. If you wanted, you could use platypodes. I'm going to rotate through these throughout and maybe make some more up on my own because this is actually quite fun. So platypuses are mammals, but they lay eggs. They have a beaver body, a duckbill face, otter-like feet. They use electrolocation, just like dolphins to find prey. And, 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 they are one of only a few venomous mammals currently alive today. Yeah, I know. How weird are they? Well, when European naturalists were looking at the first preserved platypus body in 1799, they said that this had to have been a fake animal made up of sewn together pieces of other animals. A platypus is so bizarre that scientists didn't even believe it was real when they first saw it. And if that was all of what we were going to discuss today, that would have been enough, right? But I think everyone knows that platypuses are weird. Y'all, they just got weirder this year. In addition to the beaver tail, otter feet, laying eggs, will poison kill a fool with his foot spur, and a duck face that no one believed was a real creature, they glow. Whoa! Yes, they glow under UV light. These brown creatures look bright green and neon blue. If you get a chance, look up UV light platypus and just look at all those colors. It's something right out of a Lisa Frank Trapper Keeper theme from 1984. But it turns out platypodes are the latest in a list of what happens if we do UV light on these animals that scientists have been exploring. 
a few years ago, flying squirrels and possums, America's only marsupial, got super lit under UV light. There is nothing quite like seeing a bubblegum pink squirrel in a science magazine. Guys, scientists have all the fun. So what I don't understand is why scientists just don't turn out the lights after hours at the Taxonomy Museum or maybe a natural history museum and just walk around with a UV light to see what glows. It seems easier than testing each animal, quote, the right way, one at a time. And this way, if they see something brightly lit under UV light, they could just flag it for later or have a science after dark mixer with other scientists, meet new friends, have a black light party, and get some science on. What this does start to show is that while we humans see the world one way, all these other animals see it totally differently than we do, and I, for one, would love nothing more than to open my eyes and see hot pink possums, neon blue platypuses, and fluorescent green squirrels. I wonder if this is what people see after licking those toads from last week's episode moments before their heart kicks out. Either way, that sounds like one heck of a party that I would love to see. But being curious about why this is, maybe because there's so much biofluorescence in moss and trees and other plants, this might actually help them with camouflage. It might not be that they're brown. It might be because they glow. Or maybe in some species, it might help them stick out, like a peacock's feathers make males stick out to attract mates. Regardless, we humans have a lot a lot to learn about how other animals perceive the world. And this is just the beginning. So stay tuned. I'm sure we're going to find out that our friends, the duck-billed platypus, is not done getting its weird on. Well, that didn't take as long as I thought. Thank you for joining me today on Bewilder Beasts. If there are topics that you would be interested in hearing about on the podcast, know of any historical animals who changed the world, animals who glow in the dark, animals who help humans, or wacky animals in the news, please send them in to bewilderbeastpod at gmail.com. Tweet at bewilderedpod, bewilderbeastpod on Facebook, and bewilderbeasts on Instagram. I'm Melissa McHugh McGrath, author of Considerations for the City Dog, co-training director of the New England Dog Training Club, the oldest AKC obedience club in the country, and creator of Mud Stuff Media. Now go get curious. I got today's information from WNYCstudios.org, the Radio Lab podcast called Baby Blue Blood Drive. And parents, if you want to listen to this, I highly, highly, highly recommend this. CurioKids.net, a fantastic website for curious kids and their curious adults. MaximumFun.org, the Sawbones episode on horseshoe crabs probably saved your life. SmithsonianMag.com, the rainforest site Greater Good blog. Wikipedia.org on both horseshoe crabs and platypus, the singular or the plural. HuffPost.com, and Science Alert on platypuses being the latest mammal discovered with fluorescent fur. Links, as always, are in the description of today's episode. Intro music is Tiptoe at the Back by Dan Leibowitz, and interstitial music is by MK2. Don't forget to like, subscribe, review, and share with your curious friends. It truly does help get the word out about this funky little podcast, and it would mean the world to me. You know, all the things every other podcast tells you to do. Thank you so much for listening, and I will see you next week. Next week.